Okay, sorry, we're back. Ran out of memory on the camera there. But we're back to swirling our flask, adding some sodium hydroxide. Got that pink color still working on developing here. I'm waiting for the flask to turn completely pink. I think I'll get you some larger flasks than this one. This is going to be a little tight. See that pink color starting to come in, starting to come in. And what's probably going to happen is you'll add enough. Okay, you've got a nice pink color here. Is it going to last for 30 seconds? You have to wait. It doesn't look like it quite is going to. So I'm going to keep adding because I want to show you something else. And that looks like a good pink color. Nope, it didn't last. Okay, is this the pink that we're looking for? stuff just keeps reacting back. This isn't what we're looking for quite yet either. Starting to wonder if this is going to work very well at all. Okay, here we go. That pink, that's really pink. You don't want that. So, if you get that, which you probably will, you want to add a little bit of acid. Watch this. I'm going to take the stopcock and just spin it 180 degrees. You see how that got a lot paler? Looks like it might last. Uh, maybe not. So we can do the same thing with the base. The base is less concentrated than the acid, so it'll take a little bit more of it. You want a pink color that lasts for 30 seconds. That's what we're looking for here. Keep it swirling a little bit. So what you're going to do is once you get that nice light pink color, that lasts, and I'm going to call that pretty good. At that point you need to read off your volumes on the acid and base burettes. That's your final volumes. You can subtract those and find out exactly how much solution that you've added. Okay, this is important because the reaction that's taking place here, we had hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide forming water and sodium chloride, water and a salt. That's a typical neutralization reaction. Okay. Um, You'll notice that it's one to one here. That's the coefficients in our equation. So at the end point of our titration, that's what it's called, we've added the same number of moles of hydrochloric acid as we have of sodium hydroxide. The number of moles are equal at that point. So you're ready to start calculating. Ah, yes, that's still a nice just a pale pink color, so I'm going to go with that. So as you look back, you try to calculate how much calcium carbonate was actually in that tablet. The calcium carbonate, each unit of calcium carbonate reacts with two of hydrochloric acid. And so for an equation, we've got your hydrochloric acid over here every mole of hydrochloric acid, we've had quite a few, one mole of hydrochloric acid will react with one mole of sodium hydroxide. 
but it takes twice as much hydrochloric acid to react with every mole of calcium carbonate. All right, so you will be able to find this number of moles right here with volume and molarity, just like in our solutions unit we just finished. You can find the number of moles of hydrochloric acid you added because you know the concentration, you know the volume. All that's left is this 2x over here, two moles of calcium, two times the moles of calcium carbonate. So divide that out and you'll have your moles of calcium carbonate and you're almost there, you'll be able to calculate exactly what mass of calcium carbonate you had in your tablet. I will see you tomorrow. Bye.